My name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to create a single color SVG for the Cricut in Affinity Designer using the Wacom tablet. Welcome to my new series, Wacom Plus Cricut, where I'll be showing you how you can create digital assets for your Cricut using your Wacom tablet. Being able to create SVGs for your Cricut is a great skill to have. When you create your own drawings, you own the copyright, so you can use them to create your own projects, or you can sell them online, and you don't have to worry about copyright infringement. Keep in mind that this only applies to your own characters and artwork, for example, you can't draw a Disney character and put it up for sale. It has to be your own original character. For our first tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a single color SVG. Also, I just want to give a huge thanks to Wacom for sending me their Wacom One display tablet and for sponsoring this series. I have my Wacom One display tablet set up here and it's connected to my MacBook Pro. So if you want to see how I did that, then check out my Wacom One unboxing and review video. I'm going to be using Affinity Designer because the Wacom tablets actually come with a free 90 day trial of Affinity Designer. And personally, I love Affinity Designer because it's like Illustrator, but you just pay once to buy it and then it's always yours. You don't have to pay for any kind of subscription. I'm in Affinity Designer and first I'm just going to create a new document. So I'm going to go to File, New. And then the size of the document doesn't really matter because it's vector and it can be scaled to any size. So I'll just keep the default that it has right here, letter, and I'll just do Create. Now we can drop in our sketch. I have a sketch that I drew in Inktober. I just drew it on paper and then I took a photo with my phone. So I'm just going to pull in that photo of my sketch. So I'll go to File, Place, Open. And now I'm going to just click and drag for however big I want my sketch to be. So I'm doing this little crab who's crabby. And now we're gonna go over to the Layers panel. And the layers panel is where you will find all of the different elements that make up your drawing. As you can see right here, we have the photo that we just dropped in. And anytime that we draw something, it's going to come up in the layers panel. We'll start with renaming our sketch layer. So I'm just going to double click on the name here and then I'll type out sketch. And then we also want to lower the opacity on this layer just so it's easier to draw over it. So I'm going to go up here to opacity and I'll just click that and bring it down to maybe like half. Then we can also lock the layer so that way we don't accidentally move it around. If you just hover over the right side of the layer, then you'll see the little lock that comes up and you can just click that. And now the lock is showing, which means that the layer is locked. So if you go over to the sketch, you'll notice that you can't move it around at all. Let's also create a new layer, which will be for our drawing. So we're just going to go down here and find the new layer button and click on that, add layer. And then we can rename it to drawing or whatever you want to name it. Now we can start drawing. So for drawing, we have the pencil tool and the vector brush tool. So if you go over to the tools panel in the left, then you'll find the pencil and the vector brush tool together. So if you click and hold, you'll see there's a pencil and a vector brush. So if I select pencil, then this is going to draw everything the same width. You can set the width up here and you can make it bigger if you want. This is great if you want all your lines to be the same width. So if this is the style of your art, then you can draw with the pencil tool. The other option is the vector brush tool. If we mouse over this and select vector brush tool, then when you first draw, you might see that it's all the same width, but you just need to go up to the top here and go to where it says controller and click on the drop down and you're going to select pressure. And then when you draw, the harder you press, the thicker the line will be. And then when you press really lightly, the line will be thin. I really like that for my style of art because that's just how I draw. So that's what I'll be using for this tutorial. If you want the line to be overall thicker, then you can also just change the width up here. So right now mine's at 16 
pixels, so I'll just bring it up. Now it'll be overall thicker. Now I'm just going to grab the select tool and I'll just select all of that and press the delete button on my keyboard to get rid of that and we can start actually drawing. I'll just use the zoom tool here to zoom in and then you can also use the view tool to move him into the center of the screen and now I'll grab my vector brush tool and I'll start drawing. Now I'm done drawing my crab, so if we want to touch up any areas, we can just grab the node select tool over here. You can actually just move these pieces around. It makes it really easy to edit any parts that you need to edit. And then you can also zoom in using the zoom tool, so that way you can really perfect every little part of it up close. And you'll have these nodes here and then these handles right here. So that's how you're going to control your curves. And it's really important that you do get comfortable using these because it'll help you have a lot of control over the way your drawing looks. So the little nodes are just gonna be like where there's a change in the line. Basically it's made up of points like a connect the dots. And then the handles are just going to control the direction of the line where it goes before it connects to the next point. So if it's gonna be like a curve until it hits the next point or whether it's gonna be more straight, that's what you're gonna use the handles for. So just kind of mess around with those and see how you can modify your lines and that'll really help you in the future for editing your SVGs. And now we can zoom out. So if you grab your zoom tool and you just drag up, then it'll zoom out. Now that we're done drawing our crab, we can delete the sketch layer. So let's go over to the layers panel and you'll see here's all these little pieces that make up the drawing. And actually if you just collapse the drawing with the little arrow right here, then you'll see it's all in one layer. And then let's click on our sketch layer and we're just gonna delete that. We can go down here and click delete. So now we just have our drawing. As you saw when you used the node tool, it's all these lines and we need it to be shapes. So what we're going to do is convert this into a shape. So basically a cutout of our crab. So in order to do that, we're going to have to convert everything into a shape. And that also makes it not as easy to edit though. So I always like to save the original file with everything as lines. So if you wanted to go in and make like a different version of the crab, give them a different expression, then you could go in and do that. So let's go ahead and do file, save, and we can name this crabby original. And then we wanna save another copy, which will be the cricket version which will be a shape. So now let's go to File, Save As, and we can name it Krabby, Cricket, or whatever else you wanna name it. And now we can convert this. So I'm gonna grab the Select tool, and I'm going to grab everything. And then we're going to go to Layer, Expand Stroke. And then as you can see, if we zoom in, these are all outlined now. So it's not just a line, it's actually a shape. It does kind of modify the shapes of some of it a bit. So if you wanna go through and just kind of fix any of it up, you can grab your node tool and like we can pull this down. And then we have like this weird hole right here. So I would probably just make this longer so those overlap. Now that everything is all in separate pieces, we need it to all be combined into one whole shape. So let's grab everything. We're gonna to go to this menu along the top here. You'll find the add button right here where it has two shapes overlapping and just click that one. And now if you grab your node tool and click on it, you'll see that it's one full shape. It's not a bunch of pieces making up the crab, it's just all connected. 
which is good because if you've ever used the Cricut, then you know that if you have like separate shapes overlapping, then it's actually gonna cut that piece out. So we don't want it to do that. We want it to all be one full shape. Now he's ready to export. And one thing that I just like to do before exporting is just to make him as big as the document so that he's not like this teeny little crab in this big document. So if we just zoom out, so I'll just grab the zoom tool and drag up to zoom out. And then I'm gonna grab my select tool and I'm just gonna hold down shift while I drag him bigger. Now he's as big as the document. And now I can do save and then I'll do file export. And now we can export him as an SVG. Click on this drop down and you want to make sure SVG is selected. And then you're going to use SVG for export as the preset. Everything else you can just leave the same and then click export. And he's going to be called Krabby Cricket and save. The next step is very important, which is to check your work in Cricut Design Space. And this is especially important if you're going to be selling your digital assets online then you want to make sure that your files come through correctly for your customers. So let's open up Cricut Design Space. And by the way, you can download and use Cricut Design Space even if you don't have a Cricut. It's free to use and you can just use it to check your files and make sure they come through correctly. So we're gonna go to Upload, click Upload Image and Browse. And you wanna make sure you select the SVG file, click Upload add to canvas and here's our little crabby and you can see he came through really good here he is all in one layer over here so that's one thing when you have the single color svg you want to make sure it all comes through as one piece and it's not separate pieces so that came through good and everything looks nice there's no like weird filled in spots when they shouldn't be filled in or anything like that at this point you know that your svg is ready to share whether you're going to share with friends use for yourself or sell online. That's it for this tutorial. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, which will be adding color to your SVG. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.